So how did I get involved with mosquitoes? Well, as a kid, like a lot of kids, I loved insects. And I used to go out, catch jars of lightning bugs, organize cicada uh, hunts. Um, but you know, with a name like Richie, I got a nickname, Itchy Richie. And I guess it was preordained I was going to end up working on mosquitoes. So I went to Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa, and I got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and um, worked under a guy who worked on mosquitoes. My first job controlling mosquitoes, I like that term controlling, it usually means killing or nuking them. I drove an El Camino ute or pickup truck that had a fogger in the back to fog and kill mosquitoes in the park. So that El Camino was a lot sexier than the Gran Torino Clint. And then I moved to Florida. And in Florida, it was a little town called Naples, Florida. It was adjacent to the Everglades. And believe me, millions and millions of mosquitoes would fly into town. And so we had to kill mosquitoes in a very big way. We had a fleet of DC-3s that fogged for mosquitoes. It, it was absolutely amazing. And then I moved to North Queensland. I saw the light. And North Queensland has tropical diseases, and dengue fever is one of them. And dengue fever is caused by a virus carried by the dengue mosquito. And that's, that's a, a dead dengue mosquito behind me. And um, we get outbreaks in cans every summer. We might get 500 cases. A couple of some, few summers ago, we had 1,000 cases. Globally, dengue's much bigger. You know, it, it's around 100 million cases of the worst flu you've ever had. So for two weeks, you might be knocked down. Such pain, they used to call it break bone fever. And it kills people, too. And so um, I ran for Queensland Health. I ran the dengue control program. And this was our main weapon, this pneumatic pump sprayer. I know it looks fairly innocuous, and it relatively is, but you, we used to go inside people's houses because the mosquito loved to come in those lovely open Queenslanders we just heard about. And they would hide, you know, in the wardrobes, under tables, dark shady areas, under beds. I, I think there might be a couple of you whose uh, bedrooms I've sprayed around in. But things have changed. I'm now at James Cook University, and I manage a facility called the Mosquito Research Facility. And that photo on the left there is of Claire Omade, who used to be my manager at the Mosquito Research Facility. And each one of those buckets has 500 Aedes aegypti, or dengue mosquitoes, in it. And that picture on the right, I know it's not a pretty sight, and I know you're not thinking about sex when you look at that one. But <laughs> that, <laughs> that's my leg, and I'm letting mosquitoes feed on it. And what happens to all these mosquitoes that we feed? So a little cup like this, we give hundreds of cups of mosquitoes to a group called Lemonade Dengue, and they have a van, and they go around, and they release cups of mosquitoes in neighborhoods of cans. And here's a picture of a fellow releasing a cup full of mosquitoes right outside my house. So, I mean, this is really strange. And how do we go from this paradigm shift from dengue control of, you know, spray them and slay them on one hand to rear and release on the other hand? So, I think it's sort of symbolized by this photograph of an emerging 80s Egypti mosquito taken by my friend Paul Zabrowski. And it's a mosquito, I know, it's deadly, but gee whiz, it's beautiful, and it's, it's elegant. And the solution, the new solution to dengue control is actually amazingly elegant in its simplicity. And it starts with this. It's a little bacteria called Wolbachia. And this bacteria is extremely common. 60, 70% of insect species globally have Wolbachia in them, so it's not really exotic. And that includes some of our favorite insects like this cans birdwing butterfly. But unfortunately, Aedes aegypti, the dengue mosquito, does not have Wolbachia. So Professor Scott O'Neill 
of the University of Queensland and, for, and now at Monash University thought maybe we could use this Wolbachia. Maybe we could get it inside the dengue mosquito and we'll see what happens. Who knows? We might get lucky. And they injected, you can imagine, injecting bacteria inside mosquito eggs. It took about 8,000 goes before they got one to take. But they finally did. And what, what it did was pretty amazing. There were two things it did that really helped change the way we think about controlling dengue. The first thing is dengue virus replicates inside the mosquito. So when a mosquito feeds on someone, say you've come back from Bali and you've got dengue, and when that dengue mosquito feeds on you, um, it's not like a dirty needle that just goes and bites the next person. The virus has to replicate inside that mosquito, get from the stomach to the other tissues, and eventually end up inside the salivary gland where it's injected in the saliva when a mosquito bites you. That takes about eight to 10 days. And in Wolbachia infected mosquitoes, the Wolbachia competes inside the cells of the mosquito for uh, nutrients that dengue virus needs. And so dengue virus doesn't really replicate. And as a result, in this cartoon, what you see is in step one, the Wolbachia infected mosquito feeds on someone with dengue. But when it goes to bite someone, after that eight to 10 day incubation period, when it goes to bite someone, they don't get infected with dengue. So the Wolbachia acts like a dengue vaccine for the dengue mosquito. Isn't that great? The next thing about Wolbachia is the way it spreads. So here we've got a little cartoon that shows insect love, okay? So we got a girl on the left, we got a boy on the right. And the boy, the little green dots represent Wolbachia. So he is infected with Wolbachia. And when they mate and have babies, the eggs under there, they're all infertile. So when Wolbachia infected males mate with wild mosquitoes that are uninfected, it sterilizes them. Even that is a wonderful little control tool, but there's more to it. Let's look at the other crosses. Of course, when you have males and females already infected with Wolbachia, all those offspring are gonna end up having Wolbachia. That's, that's pretty obvious. However, section C there on the right, when you have the female infected with Wolbachia that mates with a male that's uninfected, all the offspring end up infected with Wolbachia. So you can see where we're going with this. You're gonna end up with this thing spreading naturally. So Professor O'Neill thought, wow, this is great. This could be a real powerful green way of controlling dengue. And he approached the Bill Melinda Gates Foundation, Grand Challenges in Global in Health, and we got funding for this project. And I, I was asked to be part of the team to develop this method. And of course, before you run, you've got to be able to walk. And so in order to pr do a proof of concept, we did it inside of a cage. And we built a cage. We actually built a house within a cage out at the Mosquito Research Facility at JCU. And if you look in the background there, you can see um, the understory of a Queenslander house with a little pilings. And so we established a population of uninfected wild Aedes aegypti in there. And then we started releasing Wolbachia infected mosquitoes. And within one to two months, 100% of the mosquitoes within the cage were infected. So the next step, of course, is, wow, this is great. We got our proof of concept. But you've got to get regulatory approval. So you've got to prove, first of all, that it's safe. It's not going to spread in the environment. If a, if a spider eats a dengue mosquito infected with Wolbachia, is a spider going to end up infected with Wolbachia? Will it kill the spider? Those tests were done. If you get bit by a mosquito, that has Wolbachia, are you going to get Wolbachia injected inside you? And the answer is no. And also, it's not a genetically modified organism, so it's a biological control. It really is a green solution. So we got approvals from regulatory authorities in Australia. But then you've got the most cynical group of all, the public. You know, people are skeptical and cynical. And we all know here in North Queensland, we've all heard about the cane toad. Now, the cane toad is, is 
uh, a toad that was brought in to Australia. It's native to South America. It was brought in to control the cane grub. Now, the cane grub is, is a scarab beetle larvae that's under the ground. It eats the roots of sugar cane, and then the cane will fall over, and it kills it. Big economic loss. And, um, of course, they thought, we'll bring these toads in. They'll eat them. And what would happen? You know, the grubs are under the ground. The toads are on the surface. Now, the two will meet. <laughs> so what do the toads do? They eat everything else they can get their mouths on, you know? So they ate all kinds of other insects, little amphibians and so forth. And they also spread unchecked. They didn't really have any natural enemies here. And as a result, they were, were they're an ecological and environmental disaster. They're, they're common throughout most of northern Australia these days. And as I said, the cane toads were released in Gordonville. Well, where do you think we were going to release the first Wolbachia mosquitoes? <laughs> Gordonville. Are we gluttons for punishment? But no, we saw it as a challenge, you know. If you can convince the people in Gordonville that this is not a load of rubbish and that it's safe and it's not going to blow up and be another cane toad, then, then you know your game. And so we sat down with the community. We had focus groups. We talked to a lot of people and um, had a lot of sausage sizzles, as, as you can see. And eventually, they gave us a thumbs up and said, you can release the mosquitoes. And in January 2011, the cups of the first Wolbachia infected mosquitoes to be released were released in Gordonville and Yorkie's Knob. A little cup like this, about 50 mosquitoes, 10 per house, no big deal. And um, within a month, you can see this little thermometer gives a percent of Aedes aegypti in that community infected with Wolbachia. And within a month at Yorkie's Knob, it was up to almost 40%. And in Gordonville, almost 50%. And this is despite having a week knocked off because of Cyclone Yazi. And then after a couple of months later, it was up to almost 100% in Yorkie's and 77% in Gordonville. So, you know, it's looking really, really good. And to this day, it's continued. Um, it's currently at about 95 to 100% at both those communities. And this is three and a half years later. So we got through the whole cycle, wet season, dry season. Okay. So where are we going now? Well, James Cook University has continued to produce. We produce mosquitoes. And I've got a contingent of what I call loyal blood feeders. There's quite a group. There might be a couple of you sitting in this audience who are actually blood feeders. And they sit in there, <laughs> and they let the mosquitoes feed on them for 10 minutes. Because we don't want a little cage la white lab rat of a mosquito. We want tough streetwise mosquitoes. that have been around people, got to fly around. They're tough. They know their way around. And so these people sit there, and you could say they grin and bear it for 10 minutes. And we do give them a slight, you know, little recompense for their efforts. You know, they gotta, you got to give them something so they keep coming back. And we've had a lot of visitors to the cage, people interested from all around the world. We even had Bill and Melinda Gates come out here. You know, I think Bill was looking for a little pocket money. <laughs> and so where are we at now? So we've now released and established Wolbachia in seven different suburbs in Cairns. We are currently releasing in three other suburbs in Cairns, and we are going to release pretty soon in um, Townsville. So everything's going well. You know, the public, what can you do? I would say the real thing we want from you is, if they, is to be supportive. If they ask you to set a mosquito trap in your yard, you know, please allow it. If they want to release mosquitoes, please allow it. It's a chance to be a part of history. We're doing something really big here. And so then finally you might ask, well, what about, uh, is it really stopping dengue? You know, you're getting it in the mozzies, big deal. Well, so far it looks really good. So some of the, what I call the rogues galleries of canned suburbs that have had dengue, like Parramatta Park and Machen's Beach, we've had Wolbachia in there for two, three years now, and we've had no dengue activity in those suburbs the areas where the mosquitoes are established with Wolbachia, even though there's been dengue around the area. So that's very encouraging. Of course, ultimately, it'll be done overseas in areas like Indonesia, Brazil, Vietnam, where there's a lot of dengue mosquitoes and a lot of dengue. 
But in the meantime, for me, I think it's ironic that a kid nicknamed Itchy Richie, who, when he saw the mosquitoes and heard the mosquitoes buzzing around like this, his first inclination was to pick up the spray can and give those mosquitoes a spray. But now, I've changed my tune, and I say, let those mosquitoes free.